further ado, I'd like to introduce our next panelist, who is Sandy Watson, who is Children and Family Coordinator and Humber. Um, she spent 16 years pioneering family work within the prison environment, and in 2001 was awarded a Butler Trust Prison Award in recognition of her work with families. In 2003, she co-authored the book Daddy's Working Away, A Guide to Being a Dad in Prison. And over the past decade, she's been involved in Rund Big Lifelong Learning Partnership, which is involved with visiting and working on site prisons in Europe. Earlier this year, she won a Regional Prison Officer of the Year Award for Work Developing Partnerships. Please welcome Daniel Watson. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's, it's great to be here, even though this is a graveyard slot. I'm watching you all. <laughs> I think these seats are designed in such a way not to be comfortable, so I don't think anybody's <laughs> going to be uh, falling asleep after lunch. Um, this, is, this is my favourite picture of all times. Um, that's in our visitor centre, and you could look at it and just say, yeah, there's a whole load of bars. When we were offered to take over the children's centre there, um, what I said was, right, can we take these bars out? But apparently, as high as those bars are, they go under the ground. For some reason, very high security visitor centre. So we couldn't take them out, not without costing an absolute fortune. And um, so I have some very lovely ladies who work with me uh, in the children and family work at the prison. And um, you don't notice it anymore. They do some fantastic displays. And um, one of the things that I just want to say about working in a prison environment <coughs> is that you need to see this as an opportunity and not an obstacle. Now, I can be quite frank with you about some of the things that I'm going to share. I felt there's been a lot more obstacles in the last 18 months than opportunities within our prison. So I'm not coming, I'm not preaching you from a high place here. But um, we could quite easily see the problems and not bother. But if today we can look at it as an, an opportunity and not an obstacle. So I need to tell you a little bit of the history of the prison because then you kind of know where I'm coming from. Um, I've worked in the prison. So I've worked in the prison for about 17 years, and that was at HMP Walls, and that was a private prison, the first private prison uh, in Europe, I think. And it was contracted out to G4S. No matter what they say about the Olympics and everything, G4S was still a good pl place to work um, in the sense of if ever I wanted to do anything family-wise, um, G4S would never say no. They would never say yes, but they'd never say no, and that, that's a significant difference. So we had this nice little prison, which was very homely, with 360 offenders. Next door is HMP Everthorpe, run by Her Majesty's Prison Service, 650 offenders. In July 2013, the two prisons merged together to become one, and given us a total of 1,100. Now, that physically hasn't happened yet, but it will do in February. So there, um, the lads call it a tunnel, but I don't really think it's a tunnel. I think it's a walkway between the two prisons, because the two prisons were next door to each other, and once they've cut the trees down and everything that was hiding it, it's actually quite a short distance. You have to walk round. It takes you about 15 minutes, or if it's a really sunny day, it could take about 25. <laughs> <laughs> we're not recording this, are we? <laughs> So why am I here, apart from the very lovely invitation that I've had? I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, previous projects. I've been to Cork before. Um, I was involved in the Bridge Project, which in involved the Cork's Education Department. And um, also, um, I was involved in a Family Learning in, in Prison European project. And alongside them came St Nicholas Trust. So the last time I came to uh, Cork was with the lovely lady of St Nicholas Trust and uh, I'd just kissed the Blarney Stone on uh, one of those. I was so interested in Spike Island because we went to have a look around it and oh, I know Cork was building this new prison but we were just saying, why can't they use Spike Island? What a fantastic resource. As well, 
you know, there's families coming under on the boats. And there may have been a few problems with that, but <laughs> um, the fact that they had ground there that you could have used for agriculture, for animals, the, the choices of what you could do with that were amazing. And so all of us who were involved in the project were quite surprised that you were going to build a new prison and really not use that resource. I'm sure there were lots of good reasons, but uh, we like that. So um, I have been, uh, had some involvement in St Nicholas Trust, which I'll tell you a bit more afterwards. Right, so we've seen everything as an opportunity and not an obstacle. You need to have a bigger picture. Um, I was for, so fortunate to be able to go to Denmark. I, I'm not going to speak too much about the European prisons because that will come up later. But um, this is perhaps my second favourites <coughs> picture and that's the halfway family house in Denmark. We have to work with the whole family. Um, I know yeah. some of you are very child focused and I'm offender focused, but if we want to make an impact that lasts, we have to work with the whole family. And in Denmark, they have this halfway family house. And we've already mentioned uh, today, uh, uh, the, the analogy I use, at schools now, they give children an A and they keep an A until they lose it, you know, a grade mark. And uh, certainly in Denmark, the uh, prisoner is um, accepted as low risk until he proves otherwise. So this halfway family house is actually nothing, nowhere near the prison, but it will take a prisoner, which is either the male or female prisoner, and their family. And what's really significant about this is a man can serve his prison sentence, or a woman can serve her prison sentence, whilst being in this halfway family house. And the only thing that they have to sign up to is um, probation input, um, social workers, psychologists, blah, 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 the whole set of um, facilities to support the family. Uh, and what's lovely, we want to talk about child-centeredness, is that these kids suddenly find there's somebody who's interested in them. And that is absolutely amazing because they have these reunions every year and these kids want to keep coming back and coming back because they found somebody who's been listening to them, who's spent time with them. So that's my big picture and that's where I'm going. And you know, on a good day and on a not so good day, it's like that seems such a, a thousand miles away, um, but we need to have a big picture. So that's my journey. Well, that's where I'm getting to, but this is, this is where we're going so far. It's been great to hear about parenting courses because if I had to put my money on anything, it would be doing a parenting course. The impact of that is amazing. So in my little blurb, I had to say, you know, the sort of good things and the bad things, and I put the good things of working in a prison environment. And when I read that, when I came in, I thought, I don't know what I'm going to say. What, what is the good thing about working in a prison environment? Well, I'm dead proud because I've done parenting in the community. And I had this lovely community group, and there were about eight women, and I was really proud because I had three men in the group. Three men in that, and that's, that's really good. However, on a Monday morning when I do the parenting group with the men, I've got 15 lads there already and waiting to take part. So it's a great opportunity. And the funny thing is that Denmark, we've got all these fantastic things that they do um, for, not for their families, but they do for the men. I said, what parenting course do you use? And went, we don't do a parenting course. <laughs> You've got the family with you, why don't you do a parenting course? And say, we don't do parenting courses in the community, so why we sh should we do it in prison? So, um, you know, there is a bit of a logic in that. So, it's great to have a group of these, you know, big strappy lads who are all keen and eager because it's about the families. And it's a great tool for us to use. One of the lads once said to me, because I've often thought we're all women. I said, oh, I really wish we could get some men to do the parenting. And they went, oh, no, no. They won't get away with half of what you get away with. And I was like, really? What have I said? What have I said? So not only do we do one parenting course, but we, we call that parenting one. We have parenting two. And we also have like parenting 15 and 16 until we can get the message. And um, when at one point, when one lad said, we've done this before, you think, yes. He's got it now because everybody's done it before, but nobody else had recognised. So parenting is so important. And daddy's working away at a guy to be a parent in prison. 
um, was involved in this book in 2003 and it was all about parenting in prison and it still is. So I'm going to give this as a free gift to Limerick Prison because of all your uh, emphasis. And, you, and it's, it's dead authentic, so I've actually pulled it out of the prison because it's got the name of the education manager inside. I don't know why she hasn't got that. And then it's got this dog-eared corner. And those are used with the Rizzlers to do the stick. So this is the <laughs> Um, yeah, it's great doing parenting courses with men, but there is a bit of a um, disclaimer on that one. So, some of the lads will say, yeah, I was speaking to my missus on the phone this week, and she was saying, oh, the kids are doing this, and I told her, I said to her, you don't do it like that, you do it like this. And I think, oh, I don't know, please don't do that. But whenever possible, we get the parents, we get both parents in, and we particularly do this. Uh, in the summer holidays or just before the summer holidays because that can be quite a traumatic time for a single parent at home with the children. So we are trying to do some work together. We also run a course called Keeping Up With The Children and that's where um, we look at things that the children learn at school because dads can be very distant from what's actually going on in school and they say, well, we never did it like that. So it's looking at how they teach English in the school and also how they teach maths. And the men do some exercises that the kids would do and it keeps them, you know, it just keeps them fresh, it keeps them involved. And I think that's the key thing. We also do story sacks. Story sacks give a chance for men to read a book and um, make some games or some soft toys. We've been doing the Very Hungry Caterpillar. So we've got all these lovely caterpillar things that the men can send out because it, it's important for the kids and it's also important for the men to feel that they're having a positive input into that. And then a lot of you will have heard about storybook dads where um, men read a story onto CD but we also do DVD and the DVDs are absolutely amazing and we don't just let them do it for the children, we've also done, um, didn't like this one, but we've also done them for um, Valentine's Day. So like, uh, yeah, a bit like, mm -hmm. okay, but they were saying lots of lovely things to the girlfriends. And the girlfriends and the wives, they need to hear that. So we try and, you know, give them, but they also do it for the mums. And I think the, the big tearjerker was for Mother's Day when all, these, when all these strapping lads are reading out these poems, which are really, uh, you know, they rhyme with every sort of the rhyming couplet. But it's, it's a good thing to do. It's about keeping uh, up with all members of the family. And then we also have a Building Stronger Families course. We work with an organisation called Time for Families who have now been uh, working alongside the PACT organisation, which I think has already been mentioned. And um, what happens is the partner has to come in for six sessions. It's normally, we normally do it over six weeks. And two of the sessions on communication, we find out what love language everybody is. And that's a great, great activity to do. And then they have a, uh, one that's based on parenting and one that's based on money management. So all the things that they don't have time to maybe speak about on a visit, the visit lasts from 10 till 3, 10 a.m. till 3, and they have lunch together. And it gives those couples some time to actually discuss and really get to the nitty gritties because you don't get that on a visit. The visits are very short, maximum of two hours. And by the time you've got in there and you've got your sandwiches from the cafe and the kids have been running down, you've had to go and rescue them, it's a very disjointed visit. But these um, Building Stronger Families, they give uh, an awful lot of time to resolve something. And um, we're recently working with um, some of the Troubled Families team in the UK. And I got one of the, um, one of the organisers to come in and just talk at the last session of the Building Stronger Families. And what she said was, we can offer you support because my biggest fear is that we open a bit of a can of worms and then we just, oh, well, you finished the course now, 10 weeks, off you go, end of story. I want to be able to follow this up. I want to be able to give support, especially if we've been working with the partners. So we have a, a team that can come in and offer, free of charge, counselling and therapy for couples. However, that sounds really good. <laughs> but the, uh, the the slight reservation on that is that it can only be from lads who come from the whole area. <laughs> well, you know, in our prison we have lads from all different areas. So that's a slight problem. But on the last session, we were working with nine offenders and two of the women 
have sought counselling and get an additional help, and that is absolutely fantastic. Um, as I said, I believe that we should work with the whole family, and um, we've done a cooking for families course, which is just fantastic. The men do a course beforehand to help them sort of learn how to cook, and then on the last session, we bring the families in, or we did bring the families in. And there was one point where there was an offender who was really enjoying cooking, and he went la la la, and he's chopping up the onions, and he's getting really excited, and his kids are tearing up and down these very small areas. I just sort of tapped him on the shoulder and said, you need to be looking after your kids, and he went, I'm cooking. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, yeah, well, now you're right. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> you can imagine how it went. Yeah. And um, what I would show you at this point, what technology prevents us, is... Um, <coughs> family learning and probably that's what the Wolves prison previously was famous for was for the family learning course where mum dad and children under five meet up on a weekly basis and we do some work with the whole family and it's it's a play session it's like a play group but you've got mum and dad there but I've got a five minute video of that which we're going to see at the end so I won't say too much about that apart from the slight dis uh, disclaimer on that one is that my hair's a different colour. <laughs> that was uh, one of those uh, alerts. So that's where we are, but where do we want to be? I, I don't want us to stop there. We've got to keep replicating good practice in order for um, it to really sink in. Um, visitor centre, we've got this visitor centre and we don't really do anything with it. And, but now the two prisons are coming together, our visits and our visitor centre <coughs> is going to be crucial to that. So we're already working on inviting organisations in, we want to run a cafe there, we want to open up the playgroup on a, a regular basis and we want to be able to work with families, some of the work that we've, we've heard that um, some external organisations are doing. Um, before I, well I've always been in this job, but when I was part of G4S, uh, G4S has got several prisons over the UK and I was a Children and Families Development Manager over all the prisons. And uh, I used to go into the prisons and say, you know, who could do this? And I was working in a family learning session in Old Coast Prison in Liverpool. And um, I got talking to some of the families and um, one chap here, when he'd had a, his baby was born, I think just when he'd come into prison, so we decided that we were going to do baby bathing. So it nearly got me into trouble, <laughs> big trouble. Um, but it was fantastic. There was talc everywhere. But I got the water and the dad, and, and, I, and I mean this in the, in the way that it's meant to say, not, not anything um, suspicious, but the dad said, that's the first time I've touched my baby's skin. Of course it is because the baby's always been wrapped up to sevens and he, he had the baby in his arms and he'd wrapped him in a towel and he was like this and it was just a pure magic moment so I thought right I'm going to do that because we need for these men, particularly young men, we're not young offenders uh, in our prison but these young men need the chance to bond with that baby uh, in as many circumstances as we possibly can and I think bathing babies although you know, sort of health and safety and child protection kind of went, ah, we did it, and we did it safely, and we did it respectfully, and it was for all the right reasons. Yep. One of the things I've wanted for several years is I've wanted a family lounge. And we've, we've talked about some, uh, already some of the uh, visit places where the area is a bit more relaxed. So in our children and families um, porter cabins, shall we describe it as. Um, we have one porter cabin where we've got a cooker, uh, several cookers in there and we do the cooking. And then we've got another porter cabin which I've managed uh, to get some settees and a carpet. And the funny thing about this, you know, opportunity, not obstacle. Um, we had an IV, the internal verifier came to look at some of our portfolios and I said, well, maybe while you're marking those, I'll just tell you what we're doing here because it looks a bit of a mess. But what I would like to do is I'd like to get a carpet down, a couple of settees, and we've got a play area, we, we've turned this other area into a play area, and I would like the lads to come in and have a normal visit. 
Normalization is sort of the in word. It certainly is in terms of uh, Denmark, but it's my in word. Normalization, when, when can we just have a normal visit? So I said, so you don't know anybody who's got a couple of sofas and a cafe? And she went, I've got a couple of sofas and a cafe. I went, really? And she said, and I'd love you to have them. And I said, oh, I bet you can't, you know, there's some reason as to why you can't bring them in. But actually, we've got all the permissions and we've, we've brought them in. So you just never know when your internal verifier comes. <laughs> and what I would like to do is to offer to a couple of families just a normal visit. So they come in to, and they sit on settees. Because when the settees came, one of the lads said, oh, can I sit on that settee? I haven't sat on a settee for three years. Now, have you thought about that? I haven't. They went, I haven't sat on a settee because I've been in prison all this time. And there's no way to do some of normal behaviour. So we're kind of thinking of older pair, older, you know, grandpas and mums and dads, the older ones who maybe just need to sit down. Because if the seats are anything, it, it's not good in a visit where the seats are hard and they're not relaxing. So um, we're hoping to get a relaxed environment where dad can get off the red seat and he can go out and play with his kids and come back and sit and have a cup of coffee. So that's where we're going to. And I've already mentioned we need the family therapy. We need that additional um, support that can be take place either outside or within. Because otherwise, we're opening cans of worms and we can't, we can't I don't like that expression, but you, you understand what I'm saying. We're opening wounds and we're not, we're just giving them a plaster stick on it. And we need to we need to do more than that. So we have a responsibility. Uh, Impact moving parents and children together is a new course that we've been trained for, but we haven't started to deliver yet. And the reason we haven't started to deliver it is we can't find the men to do it. It's a, a course where the centre of the uh, course are the children. It's a child-centred <coughs> intervention, and it's probably the first uh, one that we've really done. And um, what it is, is it's working with the parents who have substance misuse <coughs> issues. And so we have, at the session, we will have four members of staff. Two of them will work with the adults, and two of them will work with the children. And sometimes we'll all work together, and sometimes we'll work separately. So Dad, who used to go and do whatever in the garden, he used to do his drugs or, and he said, well, there's no point because the kids didn't know I did that. You know, we've got news, kids probably did know what he was doing, but they've got that, they've taken on that vow of silence, haven't they? And they're not questioning that. Well, this is sort of bringing it all out in the open. We'll call spades spades and we'll deal with some of these issues. And that has been done in some prisons in the UK and has been done very successfully. And that's something that we're looking forward towards. Okay. Um, this is this is where I talk about the ladies, the lovely ladies from St Nicholas Trust. Um, I've been privileged to work on some of the European projects with them, and um, it was fantastic, really, because. You know, uh, Lisa and Laura, who stood up and spoke this morning, and we could have all wet buckets with them, especially if they'd have gone on to tell us more stories. Uh, while they've been working with a group of from prisons all over, they've always said, I don't really know why we're involved, because we've got nothing to offer. All we do is we make a cup of tea for a few visitors. What's that? Well, no, you're doing something. Look at everything you're doing. And they, they have not always been able to recognise what fantastic things that they are doing. So when we were in Germany and I was asked to give a talk, I, some of them, the team had been saying, we've got Margaret up there from the team, so it was probably her, saying, you know, I really don't know where we fit into this because we really, I don't know what we've got to offer. And so the talk that I gave was uh, about the butterfly effect, the chaos theory which says the fluttering of a butterfly's wings in one country can cause a hurricane in another. And so what I'd like to say to us all is small changes can have massive impact. And the kind of work that we're doing can sometimes feel like we're just making a cup of tea for somebody. We're just talking a little bit about discipline and what's that going to do. 
but those small things can have a massive impact. So you ladies from St Nicholas Trust, you're doing great things. Look at, you know, we've, you've got your conferences now, you've held your own conference, you're doing booklets, you're doing amazing things. And we, you and we all need to keep doing that because small changes can have a massive impact. So there's three things that I'd like to leave you with. And the first one is opportunity, not obstacle. The field that we work in is full of obstacles, but let's try and view them as opportunities. Secondly, is get the bigger picture. Find yourself either the Danish, I'll give you that picture of the Danish um, halfway house, or find your own vision of where you're going, because you will need that on days when you don't, you don't see so clearly, and when it's feeling a little bit more like obstacles than um, opportunities. And then the third thing is that small changes can have a massive impact. I've had a, more than one lad who has said to me, um, uh, rung me up after being from prison, so he's, he's out there and he's rung me up and he said, I just really want to thank you for the work that you've done with parenting. I thought I was a dad. He said, but you taught, your course taught me that I wasn't a dad. I was just playing at it. He said, I just had a new baby. I'm going to get it right this time. You'll be proud of me, son. <laughs> yeah, it, re, uh, that kind of confirmation is exactly what we're working at. So hang on in there. Keep going for it because we can make a difference. And I'll just finish with, with <coughs> one lad who uh, also, after they do the parenting course, we have a family day. Uh, uh, there are other things, but I haven't kind of got time to talk about other things. But the family day is great. Family day in the gym. Uh, face painting, football, the, the whole works. Anyway, this dad had done the course and then he, we had a family day in the gym and he came up to me again and said, Tanya, I really want to thank you for that. I went, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And he went, no, 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 you're not listening to me. He said, I really want to thank you for that because it's the first time I've played with my kids. And I went, yeah, that's fine. And he went, no, no, you're not listening to me. Said, what? He said, that is the first time I have ever played with my kids. I said, but they're seven and ten. I said, I know it's a shame, it's shameful, isn't it? And I said, so what are you going to do now? He said, every Thursday night, because he was going to do to be out soon. He said, every Thursday night, we're going to have a family night and I'm going to put into practice the things that I've learned. So small changes can have a massive impact. I'm just going to leave this with, we're going to watch the family learning DVD and then we'll be available for questions. Technology, please. <laughs>